This time on Low Boost, we're making a do-it-yourself air conditioner for the boat and probably my car. All right, so right now we are in the dog days of summer here in upstate New York where it gets really hot and really humid. I'm trying to find a couple different ways to help combat the heat when I'm out on the boat in our little cuddy that we have in our cuddy cabin, as well as potentially in this car because I still haven't put air conditioning back in it and I want to do that, but it's, I'd rather do it over the winter. So maybe if I could make something that could be portable for both of those things, it would work out. So I looked at a bunch of different people that made these iced air conditioners and took a lot of inspiration from a bunch of different places to try to make up something that I think might work great. Here we go. I got this on Summit Racing, little guy, right? I want this radiator, it's gonna be mounted right here, but that gives me enough space so when it's closed, the, the hose uh, lines don't bend. But that's gonna be our radiator. We're gonna mount our fan here. Um, I just got some angle aluminum and I screwed it in to the side of the cooler. That's gonna hold my panel in, right? That holds the panel in. Aluminum's great, doesn't rust, it's a good conductor of heat. Uh, then I'm, this whole thing will be filled with ice water. Ice and some water, the pump will be down there. This is just a little bit of styrofoam that I made. This is gonna seal the ice and the water inside the bottom of this, because hot air is gonna be coming through this plenum, and that would melt the ice in an inefficient way, which we only wanna use the ice to cool the water to pass through our heat exchanger. Then I'm gonna have uh, the pond pump, which, little guy here, and I'll put links to all this stuff. I got this on Amazon, all this stuff is pretty cheap. This pond pump sits in the bottom. I have a, this has a mesh thing on the front and the sides that draws up water from the bottom of the, of the cooler and pushes it up gonna pass up this line here then it will go through our radiator the radiator will sit there the cold cold water will pass through this to cool this radiator off then the air is gonna pass through this because I have a pump that I'm gonna mount on the end of this it's a it's a basically a bilge pump for a boat and that gets mounted right here and that'll shoot the air out I'm gonna have two or three air intakes one here one here and here, I'm gonna drill those out in a little bit. That's The air is gonna come into here, through the plenum, not touching the ice for the most part, and then out through the heat exchanger out. And I think that's gonna give me the most efficient, uh, you know, hillbilly air conditioning system. It's not a swamp cooler because we're actually using a heat exchanger. It's not just blowing over the ice, like my original design. This is a four inch intake, 270 CFM, 12 volt DC fan. Uh, I'll put links to all this stuff on Amazon, guys. Um, there are affiliate links, they help the channel out if you click it, even if you don't end up buying this stuff, if you buy something else within 24 hours for yourself, it helps the channel out. But uh, this fan here has got a nice big opening. You just have to make it to match up to that, and that's gonna pull the air out from underneath. So let's get started on this. I sliced this off so it would sit higher in the, in the tank. And I also cut, drilled two holes, that way I could tie zip ties to. It's actually gonna be this way. Two holes, that way I could tie zip ties to, um, to hold this in place. It's not gonna be crazy, it doesn't need to do much. If I can get it to hold just like that, it should be fine. I just silicone everything actually, so let me get going on that. All right, so one of the last things you gotta do is get a wire up. So on this one, the black one's obviously ground, brown one is hot. So I bought this controller, 12 volt, and um, I have it just hooked up to a regular DC 12 volt converter. 12 volt DC power supply, they're all over the place. You can grab them off any old Nintendo or whatever you have. 
So with this, with this here, you take the ground from the DC power supply and put it on the black wire for the controller, ground to ground. Then you take the power wire for the fan, connect it to the power wire for the DC power supply, which I checked with a multimeter because it's hard to tell. This one, they're two, like a straight line and a dotted line, um, but they're both black. So you gotta just make sure you have it connected to the right one. And then the red wire for the, uh, for the for the controller, then the blue wire to the ground. And with all three of those connected and plugged in, you can turn the fan on slow speed. All the way up. Feeling pretty good. So I'm gonna mount this, probably zip tie it somewhere. There it is hooked up. I'm not worried about this overloading. Both of these are not drawing a lot of power. So having it plugged in like that, it's just gonna be fine. And I turn my fan on. Open my vents. So this opens. You can definitely hear the restriction coming out. Honestly, the real test of this car for this ice box is gonna be one of the hottest places I can think of. And that is in the GMW. So, I tried to cool that down with some ice packs, but nothing works as good as bags. So I'm gonna try two bags of ice in this. I might be able to fit more, I don't know. We're gonna try two. The ice, first, basically, is the replacement for Freon. Freon can be recycled. This time. There's two bags of ice. I'll throw these back in here. Sealed up, pump running. Got it there, 435. There, right there. So coming out of that right now, the fins, it's 35 degrees. So with the fan on, it should be pulling 35 degree air out. Let me shut this. Let me make sure that this is still good and not kinked. I don't want any kinks. I'm gonna get different hoses so that it doesn't kink. As this pump is cranking now, the temperature coming out of this thing is continually dropping. I would like to see what it gets down to. Coming down. I'm gonna stick it in the car, see how, get started, see how long it goes. So it's continually getting cooler. Um, I may have to get a better pump so it can pump it out a little better so it's colder. But temps continually go down. If we could get to 60, pumping out, um, this, car, this car will cool off quick inside. It's hot. Let's see how it is in the car. Oh God, <laughs> this car's never been this hot or this cool. Uh, inside the car. Eighty. It's not bad. I mean, we're talking normally it's 100 degrees in here. Um, let's see the temps coming out of this. 70. The thing is though, um, I, I do think I have to get a better pump. I don't think my pump is very good on the inside. So it's not really circulating through very well. Still blowing out 70 degrees. And it feels like it's about 70 in the car. It says 81, 80. What does that say? 80. It, it doesn't feel, it doesn't feel hot in the car. It feels like it's room temperature. Let's check the inlet temperature. Inlet temperature is 84. So it's dropping it pretty good. I, I, gotta, I gotta get this pump going a little higher though. So after about two hours, there's still a lot of ice in here and the water, the water is about 35 degrees. So I just have to get a better way of pumping that up. I'm gonna put a better pump in.
Uh, the ice is still in there, but it's almost melted. However, the water temperature is still 38 degrees, which isn't bad. Um, and the temps coming out of this are in the 50s. So it's, it's pretty cool. Okay, so to wrap things up with the cooler, um, there's a couple different things that I, that, I, that I like about it, a couple different things I want to change. So effectively cooling, which in my opinion is like making it 30 degrees less than ambient temperature that you're dealing with, uh, this is able to do. It's not gonna get it as cold as your car does. Your car spews out air at like 30 to 20 degrees out of your air conditioning. You're not gonna get that with this, but if it's 90 degrees out, you might get, you'll get 60 degree air, a 90 degree air coming in and 60 degree air coming out. Uh, the nine amp hour battery definitely will extend the life on it. All this stuff you can get, like I said, I'll put links to it in the description below. The other thing is, I have changing the lines to bigger, thicker lines that don't kink and that are a little bit more insulated or maybe get some insulation for this will, inc will increase its cooling potential because um, after a little while, once it starts developing some condensation, it doesn't get quite as cold as it does when you first kick it on. So uh, the, if the water in the, in the tank is 32 degrees, sometimes it, the water here was, uh, this was like 50 degrees. So you're really not gonna get the cooling potential because the, it, the temperature rises as it comes up through here. But if I get insulation, that could help with that. And I think I might do that going forward. Next is, I built this for about a hundred bucks. I don't count the inverter. You should get your own inverter to do this kind of stuff. I like using my battery inverter for a whole bunch of different stuff. Um, not just using it for this, but for everything else, you could do it for about a hundred bucks. And um, I did this with two bags of ice and that lasted about four and a half hours of like extremely cold uh, air coming out. Um, but I think this would hold three bags of ice. So this system with the radiator and the fan is all the same. The, the difference is gonna be the size of the ice chest you're gonna use, that's basically like your gas tank. So the bigger, cooler you make with more ice, the longer it's gonna last, it's just not as compact. So I think I could fit three bags of ice in this, which would probably get me to last six hours in extremely cold temp with extremely cold temperatures coming out of this. Um, I also think I wanna get a bendable tube, that way I could bend it up in any, any way I want if we're not able to have it right out in front of me and uh, maybe seal up some more stuff. Like I said, more insulation. Maybe I'll add another vent over here, but this thing still pumps out air at a really good rate. So let me know what you guys think. If you think this was a, great, a good idea, if I should have made one bigger or smaller, uh, I honestly think this will fit in my cuddy of, the, of my boat perfectly. I'm gonna do a separate video on that. So make sure you guys hit the subscribe button. It's definitely gonna work in my E36 Turbo LS swap. Uh, I should do a separate video on me and that driving around as well. If you're interested in more with car stuff, I do a bunch of car stuff all the time, but really anything automotive or boating related, I'll do videos on as well. So thank you guys very much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.